Mali's military junta, led by Colonel Asimi Goita, has imposed a ban on all political activities in the country until further notice, claiming public order concerns. However, over 80 political parties and civil groups are vehemently calling for the immediate resumption of presidential elections and an end to military rule. They have issued a joint statement signed by more than 20 organizations, including a prominent opposition coalition and the party of the former president who was ousted in the coup. The statement declares that they will use all legal and legitimate means to restore normal constitutional order in Mali. Goita seized power in a second coup in 2021 and later in June 2022 promised to restore civilian rule by March 26, 2024, following elections in February of this year. But in September last year, Goita said that it would indefinitely postpone February elections for technical reasons, sparking outrage among political groups. There's no further indication as to when presidential elections will be held. Here's the press release from Mali's spokesperson, Colonel Abdoulaye Maiga, announcing the ban of all political parties. The speech was in French, but I'll translate it for you to ensure better understanding. Once again, I would like to reiterate my warm thanks to the members of the press who made the trip today, knowing that it is a holiday commemorating the end of Ramadan. It is very important that we give you some explanations that pushed our authorities to take such a direction. The decree that has just been read is a police measure. It is a measure of public order, whose purpose is precisely to preserve the general interest. It is not a decree aimed at a particular political party or a specific association. It is an impersonal measure motivated by a number of reasons. I would like to first mention political reasons, then security reasons. You will remember that on December 31, 2023, His Excellency Colonel Azmingueta, the President of the Chief Transition of the State, at his address to the nation, took the initiative to engage the entire Malian people in a direct inter-Malian dialogue. Obviously, we know the consequences of the events. On January 25th, 2024, for reasons that you know, for reasons sufficiently exposed to the SO64 and U65 communicants of the transition government, the authorities decided to put an end to the Algerian agreement with immediate effect. The objective sought through this direct intermalian dialogue in the first place is to draw all the lessons. I think the head of the state himself stressed it, the lessons of the difficulties that Mali had in the implementation of this agreement. This agreement, unfortunately, greatly contradicted the three principles guiding public action in Mali, namely sovereignty, taking into account our strategic interests and our choice of partners, and taking into account the interests of the Malian people. It is really an agreement that is a total break with these three principles dictated by the head of state. Obviously, in its implementation, there is a pilot committee in which are almost all the living forces of our nation who have the mission to lead this dialogue to a good point. This dialogue is all the more important because Mali is in a critical phase. The forms of terrorism that we have experienced here, of course, are forms that have evolved. At first, it was really a terrorism led mainly by external actors. Then it is a terrorism that has amalgamated with a community conflictuality. Today, this community conflictuality has sufficiently reached both the unity of our country and national cohesion. So I think the objective sought through this dialogue is really to definitely solve the problem of community conflictuality and subsequently terrorism. The more the terrorists are isolated, the more, of course, their struggle and their neutralization becomes easy for our forces of defense and security. Unfortunately, in many regions, this is not yet the case. As I said, there is a form of amalgam between community conflictuality and terrorism. The illustrations in the region are all witnesses. 
If you want to see a little bit of the internal displaced or the refugee camps that are in some regions and in some neighboring countries, at the time of implementing this dialogue, how important it is for our country, we were even surprised by sterile discussions. In reality, they were not worth it at all, for several reasons. Personally, I would describe these discussions as a paradox of a hen and an egg. We do not have time to go into more detail. On September 25, 2023, in anticipation, because we have sincerely and with good faith informed the national and international opinion that it would be impossible, given a certain number of arguments that were mentioned in this statement, to inform the government of the transition, to hold the elections on time, which would have, of course, a slight delay. Obviously, on March 26th, when certain actors are mentioned, these are congenital hypotheses that have no place to be. They could be taken largely by the Constitution of July 22nd, 2023, of course, by the Charter of Transition. All the provisions are clear and well mentioned. We are not at all in a legal vacuum. The transition continues. Now, what are the reasons? We have mentioned a number of reasons. On September 25, it was technical reasons that we mentioned. Because to this day, when we communicate, we only have technical reasons. The first technical reason was the problem of the database that we were able to solve thanks to the commitment of some of our compatriots. Then there was, of course, the issue of the adoption of a certain number of derived texts that must, let's say, be included in the application of the Constitution. And among these derived texts, the electoral law itself must be read. And finally, of course, the treatment of the results of the annual review of electoral lists by the Independent Authority for Election Management. And that was on September 25th, 2023. Obviously, in the meantime, we ourselves have been more surprised than our partners, it must be said. And when you have an agreement with a certain number of actors, these actors are your partners. I am thinking of the actors who were senatories of the reconciliation agreement from the Algiers process. Investigations have shown that these actors have taken an active part a very strong complicity with terrorist groups, which have, of course, led to a certain number of dramas in our country, including the attack on the boat and, of course, other terrorist attacks against certain military garrisons in Tambuktu and in the Ugao region. So, of course, thanks to the commitment and obligation of the Chief of Staff, Chief of the Armed Forces, and our Defense and Security Forces on the ground, there are a number of localities that have been really taken by our forces. One of the major events was the occupation of the Kidal base, the region of Kidal, on November 14, 2023. You will also remember that on December 31, 2023, when the Chief of Staff announced the initiative of the Inter-Malian Dialogue, the Algiers Agreement was still in force. So, just to tell you that, in fact, the transition has dynamics. Obviously, when you have dynamics, you are constantly forced to adapt to take certain realities into account. Today, as I said, the conditions in which this agreement ended, in fact, you know it, it was an agreement that had become a geopolitical instrument in the hands of a certain number of states things that we could not accept, in any case, in the context of the new sovereignist orientations of our country. But in the meantime, we also had to take this new reality into account. That is, when you go through the Algiers Agreement, these actors, who were some actors, not all, some actors who were signatories of this agreement, had obligations. And one of their obligations was to secure the localities in which they were. When you have a partner who you count on to organize elections, in any case, who has obligations from the point of view of the agreement, suddenly becomes a terrorist group, necessarily, it is a dimension, it is a new given that must be taken into account for the organization of this agreement. And as I said, in fact, the evaluations are underway. And today, I think that, in any case, we must be sure that the forces of defense and security, under the leadership of our two authorities, 
Do not make any effort so that the state can fully ensure its presence throughout the entire national territory. This is a bit of a political argument. So as I said, the argument developed by some political actors has no place to be. I think that these actors themselves know it pertinently. I really give you an example, a very basic example. When you have a work session with a partner, which is scheduled, I give an example. Today we are Wednesday, which is scheduled for Thursday or next Thursday at noon. And that a week in advance, out of kindness, out of transparency, you warn this actor that the day J, which was scheduled for this meeting, which would certainly take a slight break, and that this actor is waiting for this day J, which is Thursday at noon, you say that in the end the meeting will not take place. This is not at all what has been said. Today, we ourselves have been surprised by the arguments developed. I will not go into these arguments. I think that, somewhere, the correct answers have been given by other political forces, of course, by other experts. Because legally, there is no institutional legal vacuum. And six months in advance, our communique number 060, the communique of the transition government, is simply eloquent. All the arguments have been developed. The actors knew very well that the elections were not going to last, at least in March 2024. And we said it in all transparency, given a certain number of difficulties. That said, the danger, at least one of the arguments, is to push our highest authorities to take this measure of suspension of activities, both political parties and associations, which have political activities. This is mainly explained by the need to maintain a climate of serenity. We cannot lead such a crucial dialogue, as is today the direct inter-Malian dialogue, in the cacophony and in the confusion. Let me explain. The parties that come out, that develop legal arguments that do not stand at all on the road, and we know it, will inevitably be responded to by other forces. And they have arguments, of course, that have legitimate arguments, that have legal arguments, that are obvious. But all this somehow leads to a form of polarization of our society. It should not be that society is polarized around ideas that are not worth it. As I said, today the most important thing is to make the sacred union around this direct inter-Malian national dialogue. Besides, it is the only dialogue we have, it is the only initiative we have. There is no alternative. So we cannot accept that political forces, for one reason or another, take a hostage, an initiative that is also a salvation for our country. That was the political argument. The security argument, I think it was very clearly said, that the capture of Kadal, I think the head of state himself, in his message addressed to the nation after November 14, 2023, clearly said that the capture of Kadal or other localities does not mean the end of terrorism. Terrorism is an asymmetrical threat. Of course, our adversaries and enemies who are in front of us adapt. It is true that some time ago they had a mode of operation at the limit symmetrical, because they controlled a part of our territory. Today, this is no longer the case. The whole territory is controlled by our defense and security forces. But this does not last less than terrorism. As I said, it is a threat, and we must remain extremely vigilant. I think that somewhere all the recent attacks that you see in Casella or in other neighboring localities of the capital, in other border towns, necessarily show that the enemy has adapted, is beginning to have a new mode of operation. And in these circumstances, we cannot accept that sterile political debates bring us back to a very complicated situation. We have to move forward. Once again, as I said somewhere, it is true that one of the objectives of the international dialogue is to re-sow the social fabric that has been strongly torn. You have to realize that there are some localities where sacred aspects such as cooking unfortunately no longer exist. Because of this will, at least from some actors, to take revenge. Somewhere, it is also important, as I said, to strengthen national cohesion around this dialogue. In any case, we would appreciate your input on this matter. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this content, and feel free to provide your thoughts in the comments section below.